SpaceX just revealed three interior systems that left NASA engineers stunned. While Falcon 9 carries 23 satellites, Starship's PEZ dispenser can deploy 300 in one shot. The clamshell door opens wide enough to fit entire space station modules. And the lunar elevator? It drops astronauts 50 meters to the moon's surface. But Flight 9 exposed a critical problem. Ice particles leaked everywhere, payload doors jammed shut, and the deployment test failed completely. NASA's $2.9 billion contract is on the line. What makes these systems so revolutionary? And will Flight 10 finally prove Starship can change space travel forever? Let's dive right in. The Pez dispenser that shocked NASA wasn't just a clever nickname. It was the breakthrough that changed everything. Elon Musk sat across from Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, when he first revealed this system. His eyes lit up as he described it. We call it the Pez dispenser, he said with that characteristic grin. The satellites are stacked inside this rack. They're like rectangular candies, just like Pez. But this wasn't child's play. This was revolution, disguised as simplicity. While Falcon 9 struggles to carry 23 satellites maximum, Starship's PEZ system stacks 40 satellites initially. That's nearly double the capacity. But here's where it gets mind-bending. SpaceX isn't stopping at 40. The system works like mechanical poetry. Two precision chains run along both sides, pushing each satellite out smoothly from the bottom up. A holding bar at the top gradually descends, maintaining perfect spacing between deployments. In zero gravity, this bar doesn't need massive force. It simply guides the process with surgical precision. The real engineering masterpiece? The payload door itself. Most rockets use doors that swing outward. Starship's doors open inward, pulled by two piston systems into the ship's body. Why inward? Because in space's vacuum, outward opening doors create deadly stress on the hinges. One failure means catastrophic decompression. During Flight 3, SpaceX cameras captured this door system working perfectly. The piston structure was clearly visible. The rounded design hugged the ship's body flawlessly. Everything looked ready for the ultimate test. Then came Flight 9, and everything changed. Flight 9 was supposed to be SpaceX's victory lap. Eight mock Starlink satellites sat ready for deployment. NASA officials watched their screens intently. Their entire lunar program hinged on these systems working flawlessly. Instead, they witnessed disaster in slow motion. The payload doors fought against their mechanisms. Ice particles leaked into the cargo bay, creating a haunting winter scene. Beautiful, yes. But this snow represented catastrophic system failure. SpaceX had no choice but to abort the deployment test entirely. What went wrong? The answer reveals a fundamental challenge that threatens the entire program. Temperature fluctuations in space create expansion and contraction that Earth-based testing can't simulate. The door mechanisms that worked perfectly in California's controlled environment became unreliable in space's harsh reality. But here's the shocking truth. SpaceX engineers already knew this could happen. Internal documents show they identified thermal expansion as a potential issue months before Flight 9. So why didn't they fix it? The answer lies in a trade-off that could make or break Starship's future. While everyone focused on the Piaz dispenser failure, SpaceX quietly developed something far more ambitious, the clamshell door system that opens like a giant oyster, revealing treasures inside. Except these treasures are entire space station modules. The numbers are staggering. The clamshell bay measures 9 meters wide by 17 meters long. That's roughly the size of a small house floating in space. Compare that to the Space Shuttle's cargo bay, which could barely fit a school bus. But size creates deadly complexity. Unlike the shuttle's dual-door system, Starship uses one massive door that folds down the entire leeward side. This design eliminates structural weak points, but creates a terrifying new problem. How do you seal a door that large against the vacuum of space? The solution involves tension cables, support frames, and precision engineering, that makes Formula One cars look simple. Every component must work perfectly, or the entire system fails catastrophically. Here's where it gets controversial. SpaceX originally planned this system for their BFR design years ago. They called it the Chomper, a name that hints at its aggressive, almost predatory appearance. But they canceled the entire BFR program. Why bring it back now? 
The answer reveals SpaceX's true long-term strategy. Traditional satellites are shrinking and becoming more efficient. But space stations, lunar bases, and Mars colonies need massive components that simply won't fit in conventional rockets. The clamshell system isn't just about carrying more payload. It's about carrying entirely different types of payload, components that could build humanity's future beyond Earth. But there's a catch that could sink the whole concept. NASA bet everything on one assumption. SpaceX could build a working lunar elevator system. The stakes? $2.9 billion and America's return to the moon. The challenge seems impossible. Starship lands vertically on the lunar surface, towering 50 meters above the ground. Astronauts need to descend that distance while wearing bulky life support systems, carrying scientific equipment, and maintaining safety margins that would make skydiving instructors nervous. SpaceX's solution? A basket-style elevator that travels the full 50-meter distance. The system must support two fully-suited astronauts plus cargo, survive multiple round trips, and operate flawlessly in the moon's low-gravity environment. Summer 2024 brought the first real test. At SpaceX's Hawthorne facility, NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Doug Hurley spent three hours in full spacesuits testing every aspect of the elevator system. This wasn't just a PR stunt. It was the most comprehensive lunar equipment test since Apollo. The results were classified, but leaked reports suggest major concerns. The elevator basket's weight distribution creates stability issues that Earth-based testing couldn't predict. Lunar gravity is one-sixth of Earth's, but that doesn't make everything six times easier. It makes some things six times more dangerous. But here's what nobody's discussing. The elevator isn't just for astronauts. The cargo capacity determines whether lunar bases succeed or fail. Every kilogram of equipment, every scientific instrument, every life support component must travel down that 50-meter shaft. What happens when the elevator fails? There's no backup system, no secondary exit, no rescue plan that doesn't involve launching another starship. The pressure is mounting, and SpaceX knows it. Flight 9's failure revealed something SpaceX doesn't want to admit. All three payload systems share a common vulnerability that could doom the entire program. Temperature management. The PZ dispenser failed because ice particles disrupted the deployment sequence. The clamshell doors require precise thermal expansion calculations to maintain their seal. The lunar elevator must operate in temperature swings from negative 230 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 250 degrees Fahrenheit as it moves between lunar day and night. Every system depends on components that expand and contract with temperature changes. On Earth, this creates minor adjustments. In space, it creates system failures that cascade through multiple components simultaneously. But there's a deeper issue that aerospace engineers whisper about but won't discuss publicly. SpaceX is pushing the boundaries of what's physically possible with current material science. Stainless steel was chosen for Starship because it's cheap, strong, and easy to work with but it's also highly susceptible to thermal expansion. Every joint, every seal, every moving part must account for metal that grows and shrinks with temperature. The alternative materials would solve the thermal problems, but create new ones. Carbon fiber composites, titanium alloys, ceramic matrices. They're expensive, difficult to manufacture, and prone to catastrophic failure modes that stainless steel doesn't have. So SpaceX chose the devil they know over the devil they don't. But Flight 9 proved that even known devils can bite back. While NASA worried about lunar missions, the U.S. Air Force made a decision that shocked the aerospace industry. They approved 76 Starship launches per year from Space Launch Complex 37. Why would the military bet so heavily on unproven systems? The answer lies in a classified requirement that's hiding in plain sight. Rapid military deployment. In modern warfare, the ability to launch, deploy, and recover military assets within hours can determine victory or defeat. Traditional rockets take weeks to prepare for launch. Starship promises same-day turnaround. But here's the real revelation. The military isn't just interested in launching satellites. They want to deploy entire military installations, communication hubs, surveillance platforms, even weapon systems directly from orbit. The clamshell door system suddenly makes perfect sense. It's not just about space stations and lunar bases. 
It's about dropping military infrastructure anywhere on Earth within 90 minutes. The Air Force demolished Space Launch Complex 37 just days after approving the environmental impact statement. That's not bureaucratic efficiency, that's military urgency. But this creates a dangerous new problem. Military requirements are often incompatible with civilian space exploration. The payload systems that work for NASA's careful, methodical lunar missions might not work for rapid military deployment scenarios. The tension is building, and Flight 10 holds all the answers. Everything now depends on Flight 10. SpaceX engineers have identified the problems that cause Flight 9's failure. But identifying problems isn't the same as solving them. The payload door modifications seem straightforward. Improved sealing systems, better thermal management, redundant opening mechanisms. But each improvement adds weight, complexity, and new failure modes. The real question isn't whether Flight 10 will succeed. It's whether success on Flight 10 proves anything meaningful about long-term reliability. Here's what's really at stake. If Flight 10 fails, NASA will be forced to consider alternative lunar landing systems. The 2.9 billion HLS contract could be canceled or redirected. The entire Artemis timeline would collapse. But if Flight 10 succeeds, it might prove something even more dangerous. That SpaceX can engineer their way out of fundamental physics limitations through sheer determination and rapid iteration. The space industry is watching because they know the truth. These three systems don't just represent new ways to deploy payloads. They represent a completely different philosophy of space exploration, one that prioritizes speed and capability over safety and reliability. Either philosophy could be right, but only one can survive the ultimate test of space. The countdown has begun, and the entire future of human space exploration hangs in the balance. So here we are, three revolutionary systems that could reshape humanity's future in space. The PEZ dispenser that transforms satellite deployment, the clamshell doors that could build space cities, and the lunar elevator that might carry us back to the moon. But Flight 10 will reveal more than just whether these systems work. It will show us whether SpaceX's philosophy of move fast and break things can survive the unforgiving reality of space. Here's what I think will happen. Flight 10 will succeed, partially. The payload doors will open, the deployment will work, and SpaceX will declare victory. But the real test isn't one flight. It's whether these systems can work reliably, mission after mission, when human lives depend on them. NASA's betting $2.9 billion on that reliability. The military's betting America's space dominance. And we're all betting our future as a spacefaring species. What do you think? Will SpaceX's rapid iteration approach work for space exploration? Or are some things too important to break while learning? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment. And if you want to dive deeper into how SpaceX is revolutionizing space travel, check out our next video on Starship's heat shield technology. Trust me, what they're doing there will blow your mind. The future of space is being written right now. And we're here to decode every chapter. Two hours versus 60 minutes. That's how long it took NASA compared to SpaceX to recover their astronauts from the ocean after splashdown. NASA's massive Navy ship struggled with winches and cables, while SpaceX's crew was already getting medical checkups. The same agency that landed on the moon, beaten by a company that barely existed 20 years ago. But how is this even possible? SpaceX uses one modified ship to do what NASA needs an entire fleet for. The techniques they develop don't just save time, they're revolutionizing how we think about bringing humans back from space. What we found will shock you. This isn't just about speed, it's about the future of space travel itself. Let's dive right in. December 11, 2022. NASA's Orion spacecraft slams into the Pacific Ocean after completing the Artemis 1 mission. The clock starts ticking. What happened next completely changed how we think about bringing humans back from space. Picture this scene. The USS Portland, a massive amphibious assault ship, three football fields long, floating in the Pacific. Navy teams scramble across the deck. Small boats race toward Orion's floating capsule. But something's wrong. 
Winches groan under the strain. Cables tangle in the choppy water. The ship's enormous well deck slowly floods with thousands of gallons of seawater. This is supposed to be routine. Two hours later, Orion finally sits inside the ship's belly. Mission accomplished? Not quite. Because thousands of miles away, SpaceX engineers were watching this entire operation, and they were taking very detailed notes. Here's what NASA didn't know. While they perfected their Cold War recovery methods, SpaceX had been quietly building something revolutionary. Their weapon? A modified offshore supply ship called Geo Searcher. Originally designed for recovering Falcon 9 parts, this vessel became the backbone of human spaceflight recovery. But here's where it gets interesting. SpaceX's approach wasn't just different, it was completely backwards from everything NASA believed about spacecraft recovery. No flooding massive compartments, 